In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Today's Chaplain Report comes to us from the Book of Wisdom. We are going to be going to Proverbs, and to really understand what's going on here, I will set the stage just a little bit. Solomon is passing this wisdom on to his son, and the way that he starts describing it here in chapter 4 is that these are some things that my father taught me. So we'll go ahead and look at the passage in Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 through 9. Solomon speaking here, Acquire wisdom, acquire understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will guard you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is acquire wisdom, and with all your acquiring, get understanding. Prize her, and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a garland of grace. She will present you with a crown of beauty. So we see some interesting symbolism in this verse. Solomon passing down some wisdom from his father, King David, to his son, whomever the son may be, because Solomon had a lot of kids. We're not sure exactly who. But either way, he's passing down this wisdom to the next generation. And he talks about wisdom. There's some interesting symbolism in that he talks about wisdom as though it's a person, specifically a woman. You'll notice that he is specific to use the female pronoun there. Now, I find that interesting on a number of levels. And if you're looking through both the biblical narrative and your observation, you could see why wisdom would be given the female moniker. First of all, guys, you know, we tend to be a little immature. We tend to do some dumb things sometimes. And so maybe that's part of the reason that wisdom is being portrayed as a woman. And here's another thing that I think, that it, it may be part of it. Both through direct command and example, women are the ones that are in charge of training up children. Of course, fathers have a big role to play too. But for example, in church education, it is women specifically that are given the charge to teach scriptures to the young children. And so what I find fascinating about that is he talks about wisdom as though she is a tutor, an instructor. And I think that that is intended to instill in whoever is hearing it a sense of humility. To get them to think about themselves, as I do when I read this, as a young child sitting at his mother's feet, trying to absorb wisdom, absorb information, and to be like her. So I don't think that this symbolism is arbitrary. I think that it's actually very important. It may be one of the biggest takeaways from this. And I think that there's another application here as well. You could think of it as the relationship of a mother and a child, and I think that it's an apt application. But look at the language used a little bit later in this verse, or in this passage. He talks about the woman as being someone that embraces you. Again, this could be a mother, but it could also be a lover. Seek after her. Look at how the verse starts. Acquire wisdom, acquire understanding, and do not forsake her. This is language that sounds similar to the relationship between a husband and his wife. Now, I'm sure that the ladies would like to take this interpretation and mean, see? You need a wife to keep you from doing dumb things. Well, you know, that may be true. That may not be a, a totally incorrect application here. But I think that one of the things that Solomon is going to convey, and, and keep in mind, this is a guy who had 700 wives, so he understood wanting to be with women, if anybody ever did, desiring a woman. I think that what he's trying to say here is, when it comes to God's word, when it comes to wisdom, when it comes to our own knowledge and understanding, it's something that we should want in the way that we desire a beautiful woman. Holy, completely, 
Because when there's a girl that you like, especially when it's you're in a new relationship with that person, and this should last if it's somebody that you wind up marrying, it should last an entire lifetime. You're constantly thinking about them. You're constantly desiring to be with them. You're wanting to be in their presence. And you're wanting to also show that face to the world. That when people know you, they know you as a pair. They know you and your wife. You're a set. You go together. You belong together. That's the same way that a man of God should have a relationship with wisdom. That we should constantly be seeking after wisdom. That we should desire wisdom like we desire a beautiful woman. Constantly thinking about wisdom. Trying to improve our relationship with wisdom. That's an important one. And also so that other people around us, they know that we are have a reputation for being a wise person. They know that we have that relationship with wisdom, that relationship with God's word. Hey, you want to know something? Ask that guy. You want to know something? You, you want a wise saying? Go ask him. You want to know what God's word says about something? We should talk to this person. He'll probably know. That's the kind of relationship with God's word that he wants us to have. He wants others to be aware of it, whether they're believers or not, to understand that this is a person that meditates on the laws of God daily and doesn't just seek to know them, but to understand them. He has a thirst for them and spends time with them just like you would a wife. That's where I think this symbolism really comes into its own. And it helps us to understand the kind of relationship a person that wants to follow Jesus Christ and follow in the teachings of God and to be Christ-like. That's the kind of relationship, that's the kind of desire we should have to acquire wisdom. Stay the course, friends. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, no, no. It's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.